Hello Internet, welcome back to Let's Make a Game Jolt API. Today we're going to be working on adding unit tests to our CICD pipeline for the project. Uh, I think we're going to be using XUnit, at least that's what I'm thinking right now. That's kind of why I've got this whole thing pulled up. So the idea here is we're going to add XUnit and then we're going to take it and integrate it into this. It may already work. I don't know what this auto means, but we're gonna, by the end of this video, we're going to have working tests in our CI CD pipeline. And if not, we're going to, I don't know, try. <laughs> All right, so what we need to do is go here, get rid of this diff. We don't need that. I'm gonna create a new tests folder, call it tests. It's that's tests. I my names actually make sense, don't they? Okay. I believe it just wants a class library. Yep. So let's create a world of zero game jolt tests project. So this is gonna look exactly like the one above it. The only difference is that little project JSON. And I don't even know what that's for. Oh, that's just for the portability thing. I know what that's for. Okay. Class one, ta-da. We need to add a reference, that's properties, a reference to XUnit. So we're gonna browse to XUnit uh, using NuGet, which hopefully will get our project out there soon. I'm gonna install the latest stable version. And just to make sure, yeah, they want X unit. Just so that it's referenced to several other packages. Okay. So this is going to install everything. That's good. That's what we want. It's going to install a bunch of X unit stuff. And then Visual Studio is going to freak out and then we should be good. Okay. Updates. Interesting. I think we're going to ignore that for now and continue with this. We're going to write some quick tests. By write some quick tests, I mean we're going to copy and paste. There we go. It wants us to include some of that stuff. So we will. And then it's going to... Has cyclomatic complexity of 1. Isn't that a good thing? Oh, it's yelling at me because it wants it to end with tests because it's a test class. And I agree, that's probably the right way to do that. Class one tests. So we'll do that. So this is going to be our tests for class one. We don't really care what their tests for. All we want is we want working tests, and then when we start writing our actual API, we can actually write tests to test that. I am going to say test a lot in this video. Okay, so they're going to want a reference to the XUnit console runner, which I believe we're going to need anyway, because we're going to need that to actually test from uh, what, what app veyer. So, we need XUnit runner console, and we can grab that from NuGet as well. I'm just going to browse to XUnit runner console. There we go. We'll install that. And this should, if I remember correctly, allow us to run our tests from the console. So, right, that's exactly what they want us to do. Use the command like the one highlighted below. You should see output similar to this. That is a gross command. I really don't like that, but we're going to do it anyway. So package manager console. That's way we can run some things. I'm going to copy and paste what they had. And now I'm starting to question if this is going to work for a few reasons. 
mostly I'm going to question if it's going to work because the names are wrong. So let's do world of zero game jolt tests. And this is going to be world of zero game jolt tests. And I'm actually going to quickly, if I can find it quickly, here we go. No, okay, open this. Yeah, it's not in a tests folder here. It's just in that there. So that actually should point correctly. So if I run this, cannot find that. And the reason it couldn't find it is because we didn't click this button, the build button. That's important because you don't have a DLL if you did not build your project. There we go. All right, so we ran our tests. We have a failing test because this guy, failing test, which makes sense. So if we change this to two plus three, we're gonna have to build it again. It succeeded. We can run this, ta-da, we have two passing tests. So that's good, we have working tests. Write your first theory, don't care about that. That's for Visual Studio integration. Don't really care about that either. Might help with other stuff. We're gonna want it for that. So I'll actually, I'll do that. So let's open this up. X unit runner for Visual Studio. We'll install that. Okay. And I think that should be good. Now we should, let me build this one more time. But I should be able to run all tests from here. And it finds two tests, runs them, and we get it over here. We get our two tests. And you'll see, that, so the way these tests are named is it's gonna be the namespace, then the class, and then the name of the function that the test is. And you should be able to name these two, but this way we can see both of our tests are passing. This one took a little bit longer, and that's just because it was probably just startup time. So as you can see, unit tests are quick, and if they're not quick, you're doing something wrong. But all we care about is we have two unit tests that work. Everything builds still, so that should be good. I'm gonna jump over here to the Team Explorer and commit my changes. Added unit tests, cool. Uh, we can commit that. I may have wanted to save the solution, but that's fine. Let's just make sure nothing else pops up here because it sometimes creeps up on you. A uh, Visual Studio doesn't save the solution when you save like anything, unless you click the save all button. Just uh, got you, especially when you're working with these. So, especially if you're moving projects around, it won't necessarily save for you. Anyway, we're gonna go here, we've got that. It should have kicked off a build actually, and you can see it did. So, what happened here, console? It's gonna be restoring a bunch of stuff, and now it's gonna start building. It should build both of our projects now. So we're gonna get that, and now it's gonna exit. I uh, use NuGet package restore to download them. Why didn't it run that automatically? That's kind of annoying. That's really annoying actually. Okay. Maybe I'm missing something. NuGet. No, that's just for us publishing to NuGet. We don't want that. Include reference projects, sure. So if we package our NuGet projects, I think this may be wrong. I think I should read the documentation. I still haven't done that. To the before build script box on the build, do NuGet restore. We can do a NuGet restore. So let's jump here, go to build. There's our before build script. We're gonna .NET restore and then we're gonna NuGet restore. And so this should 
uh, grab all the new NuGet packages. So it should grab all the XUnit stuff that our project needs. And if we start adding other NuGet packages, it should start grabbing those as well from NuGet. So does it work? I guess we can find out. It's going to do the restore here. And looks like we're grabbing all of our .NET stuff. And we should see some stuff for XUnit. And if we don't, then things are probably broken. Yay, it's working. And it built. Well, no, it didn't build. It finished restoring. But it built. And now it's discovering tests. It started tests. And it finished tests. And you can see it actually already figured out how to run our tests and ran them. And we can actually look at our test results here. So we're actually getting test results now for our project, which is awesome. So we have integrated unit testing as well as full building. So we get our output as well as our test results. And now, for example, if I break this again, we should get a failed build if I push this. So let's go changes, fail the build. Sure. Commit it, we'll sync it up and push. And now this should trigger another build, but our failing test should actually fail this time. And when that happens, we it the entire build should stop and we should know something's up and i can act you can actually set this up to send like emails to you and stuff like that it's actually pretty pretty sweet so it's going to do all the package restores again build that should be running our test shortly there they go and we get a failure and our build is done it never finished no artifacts were published so there's no build here, and that's because our build failed. And we can see this test failed, and we can see exactly why it failed. So this allows us to kind of do distributed, uh, I guess, work on our project. So if anybody else wants to commit to this, I can have it so when they push new code, it runs their unit tests, make sure everything works. And if it doesn't, it'll say exactly what's wrong, and then they can look at it, I can look at it, and we can actually you know, collaborate. So it's pretty cool. I think I think that's exactly what we need. So this is kind of what I wanted to cover with this. Uh, we didn't really cover a lot of what XUnit covers. That there's, if you really want to get into it, there is this these things called theories, which allow you to do like data driven tests. So you can kind of plug in a bunch of data and just have it run tests for you. We didn't really get into that, and that that wasn't really the point. It wasn't really to cover this unit test, it wasn't really to cover X unit. It was more to get it cover the testing part of the CI CD pipeline and how we're going to get that into app there. So hopefully it was helpful. And if it was, I hope you guys, I don't know, stick around, leave a like, comment, subscribe, uh, and hopefully come back for the next video. So until then, I will see you guys later. See you, Internet.